for joining us on Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. On today's edition, we take a look at two young Ghanaians who are using machine learning to teach some students how to code, build, and create their own robots through STEM, i.e. science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But before this report, I'll bring you up to speed on some business stories that made headlines in the week. But then, let's take a look at this report filed by my colleague, Maoli Aholumega. Technology is meant to solve problems, and the introduction of robotics is key for that task. Although Ghana's robotics space is here to attain its full potential, a company is moving ahead of the curve by teaching students how to code, develop, and use robotics. Before I introduce my guest on this week's edition of Vistech, I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. My name is Mali Aholomeka. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back for another break. My guests are Jonathan and George, the founder and also the trainer for InnovTech, which is a STEM center. I'll speak to Jonathan. Jonathan, welcome to Best Tech. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How yeah, are you? Doing very well. And George, welcome to Best Tech. How are you doing? I'm doing well as well. Great. Yeah, so Jonathan, um, you are the founder of InnovTech. Just yeah. briefly take us what exactly InnovTech, InnovTech is. Okay, so InnovTech is a social enterprise mm -hmm. that tries to empower the youth mm -hmm. with industry relevant skills in STEM through robotics education. Okay. The STEM meaning science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yeah. So, so far, how's that been going for you? Uh, so far, so good. Okay. It, it has been going well. We, we have amazing students and we have dedicated trainers as well. So, everything is moving smoothly. Okay. Yeah. So, I understand you are into robotics. When we came here, we saw a few um, robotic um, stuff that you are doing here. Um, how's it been going so far? It's... It, it's been going well mm. with the robotics. You know, we, we do robotics because it incorporates all aspects of STEM learning. Mm. That is the science for the physics, okay. the technology for the coding, the engineering for the 3D modeling and engraving, and then the mathematics for the calculus, the algebra that we need to operate the robot. And then these are things that when the students learn, they are able to to apply what they learn in the classroom. Mm. So they see the real life effect of whatever they are learning in the classroom. So that's why we are doing this. Yeah. So I know sometimes uh, tech, uh, people build robots to sort of solve problems. Um, so far, how, how has been this, the problem solving bit for creating robots been for you guys? For, for us, we, we, we have solutions. We are working on solutions that will be coming out soon. Mm. You know, robot creating is not easy. Mm. We have to find a problem for it. We have to create a profile and then give it a purpose. Mm. So, okay, we want this robot to work in the agricultural sector. What should it do? Should it sow seed? Should it dispense water? Or what? So that's what we look at. Okay. And it, it has been quite, it's quite expensive, mm. especially with the components and stuff, getting them done. We don't have them available in Ghana, so we have to get them here. Okay. So right. that's one of the challenges. Okay. Yeah, Jonathan, thank you very much. So I'll speak to George. Okay. George, so you are a trainer here, and you've been training some of the students here yeah. to develop some of the robots. How has that been for you? Well, it's been a, a long run. At the long run, we've been able to train students to do a whole lot of things. Mm. Um, it's quite tedious dealing with some students sometimes, but <laughs> why? <laughs> you know, you know, students sometimes. Yeah, you have to teach them the basics of what is going on, and from uh, and know nothing. You know, kind of background, and you, you kind of raise them from that level all the way to understanding how to build a robot, and it's kind of tedious. That's what I mean by that. But um, so far, so good. It's been it's been a good ride. So I want to learn a little bit about the robots. Are there specific types of robots that you guys develop? Yeah, it, it generally there are types of robots. You have industrial robots, you know, okay. um, uh, service military robots, mm. uh, domestic robots, a whole lot. But these sets are educational robots. So okay. we first have to identify the purpose of what we are going to be uh, 
using the robot for. Mm. So we normally go with the base robot, okay. which allows us to do all round kind of activity. So okay. Yeah, if you want to learn it, you just come and then run it through some of the. Okay. Yeah, but some will also argue that you know learning robotics has to do with maths and physics and joints and all kinds of, which is quite difficult for some students. What's your take on that? Well, it's not as it's not as, it's not it's not difficult. <laughs> That's the first thing you need to understand that okay. it's not difficult. It's very easy to actually do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And with um, the way, the way our lessons are structured, if you come, you run it through everything. Even if you know nothing about it, you're able to you know, mm -hmm. run it through the whole process and you get the understanding. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let me just go back to Jonathan. Jonathan, so you've been doing this for how long? For close to six years. For close to six years. Yeah. Do you personally have some robots yourself? <laughs> yes, we, we have robots. Okay. Yeah, we build some. Okay. But it's yet to come to the market. Okay. So it's yeah. And so how many have you been able to do so far in terms of teaching the students and also the, the robots that you've been able to develop? As in the robots you've been yes, able to yeah. So we have about six, six. robots. Six, okay that we are working on right now. And then the students have also been able to build some projects, smart hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. smart room system, like a lot of things. Okay, all right, that's great. Yeah, so I'll be taking a quick break and then we'll be right back. So I've been speaking with George and Jonathan from InnovTech, which is a STEM center, and they've been teaching students how to develop and code robots. I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back from that break on BizTech. I've been speaking with George and Jonathan, and they are the founder and trainer for InnovTech, which is a STEM center teaching students how to develop and code robots. Jonathan, I've been having a very interesting conversation with you about, and I've been learning so much about robots. Yeah, so I asked um, George a few minutes ago how difficult it is to conceptualize these robots that you create and all of that. There's the argument that it's very difficult, it's very expensive, as well as, you know, People also don't don't are not really interested in the STEM. What, what's your take on that? That's true. That's very true. For the expensive part, mm -hmm. yes, but for the difficulty part, I think that's a lie. Because whatever the students are learning here, they are already learning it in a mm -hmm. class. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is that we are just putting it into a practical way. They are having a hands on. Okay, so I learn how to calculate the rotations and stuff. I can use rotations to move my robot. Mm. Do you get it? Mm. So they are learning it and then they are seeing the benefit of what they are learning. Mm. So it empowers them to learn more because they know that when I learn this, I'll be able to do this. Mm. And this, are based on what we've seen, the students we've been able to train. Mm. We have students who were doing like poor in mathematics. Mm. But when they started this robotics program, they, they've been able to improve and they keep improving every day. You get it. So it's not difficult. Okay. It's just expensive. It's just expensive. Yes. And that is why we at InnovTech are giving access, giving this high quality access to people from underprivileged schools okay. in, the, in our communities. Yeah. I, I like the fact that you're giving opportunity to students and people from underprivileged schools and all of that. I just want to touch briefly on that. How's that going so far? How many people have been able, been able to reach out to? So we started that last year we went on an outreach mm. we traveled all over the country wow. and we've been able to impact about 2,000 students 2,000 students yes wow and 2, they all 000. know how to develop and create robots. they can build they can program it wow. and these are students from villages mm. they, they, they they've never touched a laptop before <laughs> they've never <laughs> their first held time a experience mask. In it. it was a first time experience mm. and we took our time took them through and then they were able to do it when, when we went, we had challenges with them because they didn't have any knowledge in computing. Mm. So we had to start everything from scratch. From scratch. Mm. And because we have amazing trainers, because we are dedicated and we are passionate about what we are doing, mm. we did it well and they were able to. So they, they, they built projects and stuff and sent them to us. Okay. And they are amazing. They're amazing. Wow. Amazing. Many thanks. Yeah, so I'll speak with George. George. Now back to you again. You are the trainer here. I want you to take, I see a lot of things line up here. I don't know what is going on here. So what are, what are we looking at right now? So um, 
when in developing a robot first you need to see the component that you'll be needing mm. we have the hardware and okay. then we have the software okay. but then even with the hardware we have the parts that are input and the parts that are output okay look at some, something like this and it's an intelligent brick and this okay. one this can one I, for I example it? you can hold it okay this one for example behaves like the brain of the robot okay you get it so this is like the engine this is yes robot. this is okay. the engine this is where all the thoughts and code goes to before the robots can do. okay and we also have sensors okay, okay. something like this this a touch sensor for example okay this kind of sensors allow us to you know give the robot the ability to pick data from the environment and then interact with it okay, okay. we have ultrasonic sensors and among others and then we have some things like the large motor for example okay, okay. Well, what, what, what's the function of the motor well the large motor allows it to the motor in general allows okay. it to move around okay when you want to when you want to build for example let's say a human leg you mm. see the way our leg can yeah. move around yes yeah. and you want to attach you want to build the robot to have that kind of movement mm. that's when you use the motors and stuff okay yes and then the sensor for example i said i mentioned about it mm. yeah so the touch sensor for example the skin. what the human being does and then so like I was saying, the touch mm. sensor, for example, so mimics the skin. So we are just trying to do what exactly the human being is doing by in a robot version, so okay. that the student can relate with that. Okay. So we get we start from there, then we go there. Wow. Yeah, we okay. So, that. but how long does it take to develop a robot? Does it is it a lot of time? Well, it depends on the capacity of the person building it. Um, it doesn't involve much time okay. in building. Yes. If you understand what you are doing, if you go through the whole training process and you understand what you are doing, it's super easy. Okay. Barely an inconvenience. Okay. And what about the coding aspect? You know, I know it's a lot of mathematics and I don't really like math myself. <laughs> but yeah. Well, the logic behind the programming is easy. Okay. okay. This programming is not text-based. I mean, it's not the zeros and ones and, you know, the okay. Python and stuff that people see. Okay. But it's actually block-based programming. Okay. okay. So the block-based programming, you just drag and drop and then okay. you kind of understand the logic behind what is going on. That's what is important. So and you that's conceptualize why. and develop it exactly. from the laptop? Exactly. Yeah, we do it from the laptop, download the code today. The okay. And you build from here. Okay. You download the code today and the robot will work with it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So Jonathan mentioned something very briefly about expensive. Um, I want to come down to the raw materials. Do you source this locally or you get them, you import them from somewhere? Well, we have to buy it online okay. and it involves a lot of shipping and, you know, <laughs> But yes, we, we get them from online stores outside. All right. George, thank you so much. I'll okay. just go back to Jonathan. Jonathan, just final words uh, before we, you take us through the, the process and how, the, how the, some of the robots work. You as InnoTech and also as a business, where do you want to see this going? Because I know you've been helping the students develop them. So we are, we are looking at expanding. Mm. We are currently, currently partnered with the Ghana Education Service. We are also looking forward to having corporate sponsors on board who would be able to give access to access of this quality experience to these underserved schools. Because mostly it's only the rich schools that have this. Mm. So you can have schools there that do not have this. And they are left out. They are not into it. So we are looking at giving access to them as well because education is a right. Everyone has to be educated, and you can't leave anyone out. So that is what we are doing. So we, we are looking forward to the corporate sponsors, especially, and then the government to assist us in bringing access okay. to... Yeah. All right. There you have it. I've been speaking with Jonathan and George, the founder and also the trainer for InnovTech, which is a STEM center helping students to develop and code robots. Very briefly, I'll be speaking with some students who have also been involved in creating and developing these robots. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back from that break. I have here with me one of the students here at the InnovTech STEM Center. And uh, his name is Sly. He's going to tell me what exactly that he's been working on. Sly, welcome to Bistec. How are you? Fine. Yeah, great. So what, what exactly am I looking at right now? You're looking at a robot that can lift up um, objects. Okay. From, um, okay. So what was the process like for you developing this? First, you have to build a robot. Mm. And after that, you have to 
program the okay. robot to it. So only that you uploaded the code to the robot. Okay. So you actually you just didn't build it, you 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 do the coding and all yes, of that. Do, the coding do you like mathematics? Do you like coding? <laughs> yes, I do mathematics. <laughs> yeah. like and it's been good for you so yes, far. Yes. Um do you have any plans of um, being an aeronautics engineer or robotics engineer or something? Yes, please. Okay. What, 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 do you, what do you seek to get out of this? Um, with, with robots and this one, we can help our environment. So let's say like, um, some of the um, objects are there that are very heavy for human beings to mm. lift up. We can create robots that will do that work for us. And this is something like automate tax and do this kind of things. Okay. okay. Alright, great. So I'll move to some of your colleagues and I'll ask them how they may friend. So yeah, I was, I've been speaking with Sly. I'll move to Priscilla and Amanda. They're all students here at Laboni Secondary School and they've, they're they part of the STEM, InnovTech STEM Learning Center. You are Priscilla, right? Yes, please. Yes, so how's it been for you so far having to develop robots? Okay, it wasn't that tedious, but we did team work and we build it. Mm, okay, yes. yeah, but um, what do you seek to achieve with developing this? Yes, so it takes things and moves with it and it's making moving with it easier than a normal human being doing it and doing it the manual way. Mm -hmm. yes, so it makes it easier and faster. Okay, yeah. And I'll come to Amanda. Amanda, how are you? I'm okay. Yes. So you personally, what, what do you seek to achieve as being part of this class, mm -hmm. like developing and creating robots? Oh, okay. So me being part of this class will help me bring some robots such as this one to help us move certain items. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But do you have any plans of being an aerobotic engineer? In the yeah. Future? <laughs> yes, I can help build some robots to improve our conditions in Ghana. Mm. But what course are you studying here? Science. Science. What about you, Priscilla? General science. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I've been speaking with Priscilla, Amanda, and also Sly. They are students here at Laboni Secondary School, and through the help of InnovTech which is a STEM center, they are developing and creating their own robot to solve problems in society. They've been my guests on this week's edition of BizTech. My name is Maoli Ahonmeka. Many thanks for watching. Thank you, Maoli Ahonmeka, for that report. Up next is Biz Headline. Stay tuned. Effective today, 1st April 2022, retailers are going to sell bag of sachet water for eight Ghana cities. This was disclosed by the National Association of Sachet and Packaged Water Producers. In a press statement signed by its president, the association stated that this has become necessary due to the city's depreciation and the increase in the price of fuel, which is a major part of the distribution process. It also noted that the cost of inputs has also shot up, leading to an increase in related products. According to them, this has necessitated that ice bottled water, that is the 500 ml, will be retailed at two cities and the 750 ml or what we call the medium size will be sold at two cities 50 pesos then the small size will go, no or the bigger size rather will go for three cities 50 pesos iced sachet water will also remain unchanged at 40 pesos President Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado has expressed enthusiasm over the passage of the e-levy bill. According to him, despite stiff opposition, protracted and sometimes acrimonious proceedings that have surrounded the passage of the bill, he is happy the House has passed the tax measure under a certificate of urgency. He said this during the State of the Nation address on March 30th, 2022. Meanwhile, Parliament has adopted a revised rate of 1.5% for the electronic transfer levy from an initial 1.75% proposed by government. Despite the protracted and sometimes acrimonious nature of proceedings, I'm happy that the House has finally found it possible to pass the e-levy bill. I believe strongly the levy is going to make a significant contribution to revenue mobilization and the management of, our of the national economy. 
And I want to thank members of the House for making this possible. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, there are many problems that we have to overcome to get, to get back to where we ought to be. I need your support. No president, no parliament, no government can undertake this task all by themselves. We need all Ghanaians to pull and push together. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has hinted that the implementation of the electronic transfer levy will commence in May this year. According to him, the Ghana Revenue Authority and the Controller and Accountant General's Department will be the revenue collectors for this levy. I think it's really exciting because for the first time, we are going to be able to literally have everybody paying taxes. And that's phenomenal. And that creates a certain awareness of governance and a certain personal interest in protecting the public purse. And I think that's important. You know, when people to begin to feel that, hey, my money is in there, so I'm not going to, it's not the Minister of Finance who has to come and catch anybody. And that changes the spirit of the country, and I think that really may be the most important element to this. We indicated, we indicated that GRA has promised us, but, but in, in May, we should get that done. In, in May? In May. The government is working assiduously to introduce the first ever battery-powered electric buses as well as gas-powered buses for public transport. The Deputy Minister of Transport, Frederick Obing Adom, has announced. According to him, the move forms part of a number of interventions that would help serve an important leverage to set the tone for the gradual decarbonization of the road transport sector. He said this when he was speaking on behalf of the Transport Minister, Kweku Ofori Esiyama, at a regional stakeholders meeting on the National Energy Transition Plan at Techiman. The Finance Ministry has noted that ATM withdrawals will not attract the 1.5% charge on electronic transfers. Also, same-person transactions will not attract the e-levy. The e-levy is a tax imposed on electronic transfers charged at the time of transfer. The levy shall be administered by the GRA and collected through licensed banks, specialized deposit-taking institutions, payment service providers, and electronic money issuers. According to the Finance Ministry, this is to help widen the tax net and also afford Ghanaians the opportunity to contribute to the nation building. In a document explaining which transactions or otherwise the e-levy will affect, the Finance Ministry noted that loan repayment will also not attract the levy if the recipient is registered with the GRA for income tax or VAT. Otherwise, the sender will pay for the e-levy. President Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado has signed into law the e-levy. The decision comes after the e-levy was passed by parliament on March 29th under a certificate of urgency in the absence of minority lawmakers who staged a walkout when the bill was at the consideration stage before the second and third readings. The levy, which was or the levy which has caused controversy since its announcement in Parliament will now be implemented to cover electronic transfers, including mobile money, bank transfers, among others. Despite stiff opposition, the tax measure will fill revenue gaps and help address the country's revenue mobilization and economic management. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata during the consideration stage announced an amended rate for the levy from a proposed 1.75% to 1.5%. It will apply to electronic transactions that are more than 100 cities on a daily basis. He argued that the implementation of the e-levy will rake in 6.9 billion cities in revenue for the 2022 fiscal year. Although the levy has been passed and assented into law, the minority caucus in parliament have on numerous occasions described the levy as regressive and one that would erode gains made towards a cashless economy and cripple businesses in the informal sector.
That's all for today and thank you for joining us on the most watched business show in the country. Bistec airs every Friday on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. But before we go, do log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more stories. Do well to follow us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at the Ghana Web. On YouTube, Ghana Web TV. Once again, I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. Do have a lovely weekend.